good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome all of you. Uh, it really is a great honor that so many of you come so early. So I apologize a little bit for making agenda in a way that we start too early, but we, we have plenty of work the whole day along. So that's, that's, that's so. Um, later, I will say a few words about the project and some other things. But uh, first, let me give the floor uh, to the Vice Dean for Scientific Work of our faculty, uh, Nina Krishlanin. She will uh, welcome uh, the audience in the name of our Dean who became ill. Many people immediately or from a few days ago uh, have been ill, but okay, nothing serious. So I, first I will give her the floor and then I have a special honor to give also the floor to uh, Brankica Jankovic, the Commissioner for the Protection of Equality uh, of our country. So first Nina, then uh, uh, Brankica, and then I will say a few more words. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Professor Vujadinovic. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome you in the name of our Dean, Professor Zoran Milkovic, who is unfortunately unable to be with us today due to health reasons. And it's also my great pleasure to welcome you not only as the Vice Dean, but also as a member of this project, which has been and still is very successful, more successful than we originally expected. We intended to make the curriculum for the master's study program and to write one book which would essentially serve as an introductory textbook to the program. Then Professor Vujadinovic had an interesting idea of publishing another book on more concrete issues. Then that one book turned into four and with the promise of a new series dedicated to uh, law and gender by Springer. Professors Vujadinovic and Kostic will be the editors, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the upcoming sessions. I would like to say only a few words about the relevance of studying law through a gender perspective. When we think about gender inequality, some of us first think about ancient and medieval history where it went without saying, or at least I do because I'm a legal historian by primary specialization. And yes, there were for many centuries and millennia, people took it more or less for granted that men and women had different rights and duties before the law, just as noblemen and commoners had different rights and duties before the law. Naturally, in both pairs, the first was the better off, but they took it as two different groups. Nowadays, we have different attitudes. We think that all men and women, regardless of their birth and other personal qualities, should be equal before the law. And it is a very good thing that, at least in very many countries around the world, generations are already growing up for whom such equality before the law is something normal, something taken for granted, something that they think every sane person should also take for granted. But there are also many challenges before the law seen from a gender perspective even today. On the one hand, not all countries in the world have gender equality. We know that now that a large part of the world has accepted gender equality as a standard paradigm, that sort of problem is readily obvious. However, the solutions are not always readily obvious, and sometimes those who are trying to help have the urge to uh, abolish all that backward traditions and culture that come with gender inequality that, of course, has the risk of destroying important cultural heritage that can be uh, taken very poorly by the country in question, opposition can appear, and so on and so on. On the other hand, that might be a slightly exotic 
topic for most of us today. I think most of us here are from European countries and we have gender equality before the law. However, the fact that we have it on paper doesn't necessarily mean that we have it in practice. There are many reasons, and I won't delve into them in more detail because that's what the participants of the conference will be talking about in these two days, that although men and women are equal on paper, in practice, due to some stereotypes, due to some poor understanding of that one problem or another, in practice, the results are very different. But there is also one more problem. Since we have an encompassing paradigm of gender equality, sometimes we think men and women should be equal literally in everything, and that is not always a good thing due to some natural biological reasons. Take a simple example, how many of us have taken maternity leave and how many have taken paternity leave, but even that aside, there are important issues, say, in medicine, where men and women differ much more than we think, in producing safe, safety equipment, in many issues and activities that are not primarily legal, but that are and should be regulated by the law, and having knowledge of where the genders should be treated equally and where not, Spreading that line carefully is something that we as lawyers should do and should train our students to be able to do well. And I think this project and this conference will be a valuable contribution to that effort. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Brankice. Thank you very much, Dr. Vladinovich, and your colleagues, your partners, friends. It's uh, my great pleasure and uh, honor to welcome this uh, esteemed uh, gathering on behalf of uh, uh, institution of the Commissioner for the Protection of uh, Equality, which is also a dedicated uh, partner in the Long Gem uh, project. I am grateful for uh, the opportunity to, to strongly support once again uh, uh, the inclusion of a gender uh, perspective and in legal science and uh, gender competent approach uh, in legal education. Uh, law is uh, present in all the structure of social life and therefore it's so, it is so important that the creation, uh, application and interpretation of law are gender uh, sensitive. Moreover, the absence of a uh, gender uh, perspective and uh, equality perspective at, at all leads us to uh, discrimination and dehumanization of the society. Uh, seeing dehumanization as the ultimate enemy, uh, the ultimate solution must be revitalization of humanity and uh, equality. Uh, the source of the revitalization uh, actually uh, lies in uh, legal science, and uh, for that reason, I congratulate uh, of, uh, this great Low Gem team professor and teacher uh, on, on the work uh, done so far. Uh, we, uh, and, and me personally, as an uh, institution for uh, protection of equality uh, established to combat against all kinds of uh, discrimination. We are very proud uh, of this project. Uh, we think that uh, this project uh, shake out deep, deep uh, rooted patterns at the mm -hmm. uh, university, and I think that we uh, open a new page in the, uh, uh, our university at all and the high level of education. Uh, of course, uh, the application of law is crucial. Uh, so we are here, we are your partners from the beginning of uh, this uh, project. And uh, uh, later, uh, my colleague and me will speak uh, about some uh, special, specific issue referred to the strategic uh, lawsuit that we have initiated so far. But uh, what I want to... Uh, emphasize in uh, 
uh, before that is that each of uh, our uh, cases is uh, important from uh, many aspects. Uh, we are creating legal practice, uh, the society is moving towards more human and, and just, but also because uh, of a strong, important message that uh, our successful cases are sending uh, justice is achievable and no one is above the law. But later we speak in more detail. And uh, for the end, I want to emphasize that there is no need to, to uh, emphasize the cost of uh, bringing about social turmoil and the price of uh, uh, shifting uh, uh, borders. But uh, if, there is a, if there is something um, what fill, fills me with hope uh, is the fact that we are, we are here all together, uh, theory and practice, and uh, united and resolved to insist on justice and humanity, the only solid foundations on which a true civilization is uh, built on. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Brankita. Thank you, Nina. <laughs> I will say just a few words. First, I want to welcome uh, especially our keynote speakers, uh, Rosemary Hunter uh, and uh, Marion Ruvenkamp. Also, we will have uh, as the keynote speaker Adrian Wink, a professor of the University of Iowa College, but she will join us online in the afternoon. I had to accommodate the whole agenda due to the time difference, six hours, so she will uh, be there uh, in the afternoon session. And also uh, Ivana Jelic, the judge of the European Court of Human Rights, was supposed to be with us here in live, but uh, two nights ago she started being ill and finally she got COVID. So I'm even... I'm even not sure that she will be able to join us for the roundtable feminist judgments uh, online because she does not feel well. But that's the life. So COVID uh, has Still followed us and accompanied, accompanied our work from almost from the beginning. Uh, so we started uh, in October 2019. Nine and then in a few months, uh, we planned uh, uh, learning, teaching, uh, training, uh, uh, seminar workshop, and immediately it could not be organized. We had to postpone, and it will be uh, added to the Palermo, the fifth uh, and the last conference uh, uh, within the project in October. So from then, it is postponed uh, for... Uh, the October uh, October session conference uh, uh, in 2022, and from learning teaching, which was which was supposed to be the focus of that workshop, learning. Now uh, the focus will be on teaching and training of the lodge lodge team uh, members. Uh, so even Ayelich will not be here, uh, uh, as I said. COVID did a lot, but in spite of COVID, I really has to uh, say uh, between all of you that we have been working like, like the people who do not mind, who do not care, who do their work in the best possible way. And that's the reason that we really make uh, good results. About the results, we will speak later. And just to mention, we have uh, five intellectual outputs uh, within this project. So the project is, uh, the main uh, aim is to uh, create uh, the new uh, master's program, Law and Gender, to reconsider from the gender perspective all relevant fields of legal education, of the, uh, the positive law as well as uh, all... Uh, the, uh, all, all the subject matters, fields uh, which are accompanied to law, so uh, also to take into cons consideration this multidisciplinary approach. And so the main shadow idea or the main core idea is to involve the people, professors uh, of all subjects to, to reconsider their, their knowledge from gender perspective. Then if they 
managed to do that for this master's program. They will also apply that knowledge for uh, uh, undergraduate studies and whichever of their uh, work, academic work. So idea is, I think, very wise and uh, useful. And at the end, uh, we have already been in the pro- uh, process of accreditation here at the Faculty of Law and some other faculties, uh, LUMSA, for example, ah, I, I forgot to say. So we have five uh, partners, uh, Cadiz, I don't know from the beginning to pronounce that the best, uh, I apologize, uh, from uh, uh, Spain, then LUMSA University from Italy, Orebre University from Sweden, Sarand University from Germany, and Belgrade University. And I started with mentioning uh, just mentioning five intellectual outputs, but I didn't mention any of them. Uh, Nina, 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 Nina mentioned curriculum for master's program, then empirical survey tool. We, we have already done it. I do not have a time to speak more about. Uh, then also uh, the textbook. We will speak about that later. And uh, two more intellectual outputs, uh, gender equality legal clinic, already created and it will be implemented and something very important lifelong learning platform uh, which you can see uh, at the web uh, page of the faculty of law and all other uh, universities uh, included in this project for the beginning this is i think enough thank you once again and uh, many of our colleagues from the faculty of law will join us later they have exams even today and our examination term lasts maybe one or two more days but they will join us so we will uh, end this uh, uh, welcome part and the introductory part and i will give the floor to professor ivana kristic for the next session uh, and round table feminist judgments please ivana the floor is yours Thank you.